Star Trek Beyond is hands down the best film of this trilogy. I think the past two films are directed by J.J. Abrams, but this one was directed by Justin Lin, and I'm surprised I actually enjoyed it this much because I don't like Justin Lin's movies or his works. But this film gave me a little more of what I wanted. The story was a bit deeper. It gets a little more personal, which with each individual character and the crew of the Enterprise is put to the test. They, they're they essentially all struggling and all have to fight. It's not just the Spock and Kirk show. From the beginning of the film, you can see that James Kirk is exhausted mentally, psychologically, not just from being out in space for, for five years, which can have a, a great psychological effect, but also trying to chase the ghost of his dad. James Kirk talks about how space is endless, so if it's endless, Starfleet is essentially chasing something that's forever out of reach. But that also applies to him trying to be like his dad or trying to live up to his dad's greatness. You can never be his dad because he's James Kirk. The problem is, who is James Kirk? And so this story is a journey of self-discovery for him, like trying to find out who he wants to be, where he wants to be. And I think that was great. That was a much deeper story than the previous films where he's either pissed off or just being stupid. And you get to see Mr. Sulu with family. We get to see him with his daughter. I think it was a daughter and his boyfriend or husband i'm not entirely sure but the point is that you get to see that these people have lives outside of the enterprise they're they're people with loved ones with responsibilities and obligations outside of starfleet so it's easier to relate to these characters that they're not just people on a ship and then spock being faced with the reality of his mortality since off screen ambassador spock died but that's because and i didn't know this at the time that Leonard Nimoy died in real life and, and I was sad to hear that because even though I've, I've never watched Star Trek prior to watching this trilogy Spock was one of the names that I recognize. I think everyone if they've never watched Star Trek a day in their life They never watched the show or the the films or nothing like you've heard the name Spock So it's really sad to hear that but I'm looking forward to watching the original show and the original movies to see how they compare to these but Anyway, let's get back on track. Like This all happens as he's having relationship issues with Uhura, which I don't really give a fuck about because their relationship was completely pointless and inconsequential to this entire trilogy. So that could have been all scrapped, but I just love that you get to see a more personal side to these characters. And I mean that as them being individuals, not part of a crew. And the villain of this movie was also surprisingly good, who was played by Idris Elba. Um, he plays Crawl or um, what's his name, uh, Balthazar Edison, and I thought it was going to be kind of a one-dimensional, kind of boring, bland villain like the previous film, because I didn't really like Nero, I think it was Nero, the, the Romulan guy who's pissed off because his planet got blown up, so he just goes to the past and takes his revenge on everybody else who had nothing to do with it, and then Khan, who I wanted to like because I love Benedict Cumberbatch, but I just feel like his character was poorly executed, which is a shame because Khan is one of the most famous characters in Star Trek. But Idris Elba or Crawl was a fantastic villain in comparison. He his as events unfolded, you get to see why he did what he did, and you can kind of feel sorry for him and what happened to him. But at the same time, he's he's kind of crazy. And this film also introduces Jayla, who was a new character. And prior to watching like any of these films, I actually thought she was gonna be the villain. I guess because she kind of looks scary, <laughs> but she was actually a pretty cool character. I think my biggest issue with her is that they didn't explore her enough. Like I wanted to, to know more about her and, and see more of her past, not just her family died and she's been stranded on this planet and she wants to leave, which is fine, but I would have loved to know more about her. In this film, rather than then it being the Kirk and Spock show where they both jump in to save the day or one jumps in to save the other, I mean, that does happen. But when they're stranded on the planet, like McCoy is with Spock and Spock is injured. And like I said, he's faced with his own mortality. So that, that's it's not just about him being hurt, but also what, what happened with Ambassador Spock and what he wants to do with his life and the time that he's given. And check off with Kirk and Scotty, I believe, is alone. And then, yeah, he's found by Jayla. So they all have to fight their way to get back to each other. And that's essentially the opposite of what Crawl believes, which is strength comes from struggle, pain, and suffering. And the Enterprise crew gets their strength from know each other, like as a unit. And they individually have to fight their way 
back to each other. I mean, except for the people that are captured, they can't really do anything. But they're still trying to do something. That they're not trying to be useless slaves that are just, you know, waiting to be saved. They're not trying to be some damsel in distress. They they're trying to do what they can to get themselves rescued. And um, Kirk is trying to be a captain and get everyone back together and make the best decision possible that gets everyone out of there alive. I think my biggest issue with this film is the previous two films. Just like in Star Wars, the sequel trilogy, when one director screws up and the other one has to come and fix it, you can't really do anything because the story's already been screwed up. Uh, you had two films of James Kirk being an incompetent idiot. I mean, he kind of was in this one for a moment, but for the most part, he was trying to be a good leader, a good captain. And in the previous two films, he was just stupid. I don't know how he he got into his position, and then Ambassador Spock Prime comes in and tells him, "Well, you're supposed to be the captain, so I mean, just piss me off, and then no, you'll be the captain. no. It, it shouldn't be that way. You should see him learn the ins and outs of Starfleet for the most part, learn something about it, because we didn't we never get to see that, and then learn how to be a captain, learn how to be a leader through making mistakes, through struggle, through fighting. Like the, you have to work your way there. You can't just become captain based on some technicality or or whatever or fate like none of that the previous two films just weren't good enough for me to build anticipation towards star trek beyond but then i watched it and hey, it was pretty good because i remember saying in the last video and hey, i'm still gonna watch this film because hey it might be the greatest film i've ever seen it's not but <laughs> it's better than the previous two films another issue i have is just like them wasting time um when they dock in yorktown um i think the first thing that happens is uhura and spock broke up which you can completely scrap because it's not important to the film but they also take the time to show us the trains the buildings the the transportation the people living and etc etc like that was unnecessary i mean yeah it looks cool but they were in yorktown for all of two seconds like they docked spock and Ura supposedly broke up but other than that all it is is james kirk trying to see what was up with that uh vessel the person who just found yorktown and, and needs the help of yorktown to find her crew like why is kirk the one being called there i mean did, did they specifically request kirk to come there because she mentioned him by name or is he there because no reasons maybe i missed it but it, it's just kind of weird how they just take her word on it she just says hey help me my crew is missing they have no idea who she is and they just take her word for it they just go venture into the unknown where no one has been before because you can't see past the the dense nebula so it, it's just kind of weird to me plus that she looks a lot like crawl and this crew so i don't know how they didn't put two and two together it would have been better if they had some sort of an, uh questioning like kirk trying to find out the details of everything going on because they really should have handled her deception better i mean at no point did i feel like she was a good guy or she wasn't hiding something like it it, it, it felt kind of sus to me so like they didn't really handle that whole deception really good and seeing them individually to see what they're striving for like what 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 keeps them going like uh sulu and Hura, like all these people because they're all part of the enterprise crew but all you see them do is their jobs like you never get to see them be their own person so moments like when spock's found out that ambassador spock was dead like i, I would have loved to see more moments like that i mean not necessarily so sad but like something like that something that affects them deeply uh whether it's spending time with their loved ones or friends like whatever it may be like just just be more personal instead of just we're all a crew and we're going to do our jobs and that's pretty much it. And I would have loved more than just a simple you know, motivation speech for Scotty to convince Jayla to help them because she said she wasn't going back there. She was essentially traumatized. She had a traumatic experience dealing with Crawl and his men and they just give one little tiny speech and she's like, okay, I'll help you. Like, that was pretty dumb. I would have also loved for it to be a little more unpredictable because when Kirk was thinking about getting away from being a captain and Spock was thinking about leaving the Enterprise in order to dedicate himself to New Vulcan and, and essentially doing what Ambassador Spock was doing, they're both so predictable and they stick with their Enterprise. And even though I said this was a journey of self-discovery for Kirk, you don't really get to see that journey too much. So I would have I would have liked a little more of that, like a clicking moment for him where he realizes this is who I am. This is who I want to be. And he can't ground himself because, I mean, we saw with Crawl what happens when you take away a man's identity, when you take away who he is, like you take his resolve, like he completely changes. And 
that's what he wants to be so he's gonna stay in space like I, they never gave us that moment so even though he was trying to figure out what he wanted to do and who he was we don't really get those defining moments in the film i mean it, it's they talk about it and uh, you know it's there but you don't get to see it so i would have loved to see a lot more of that it would have made it a much better story in my opinion but yeah i don't want to i don't want to keep going because i don't want this video to be too long but I enjoyed the movie, it was way better than the previous two. Overall, the trilogy was pretty bad because of the previous two films by J.J. Abrams. I don't I don't know how Justin Lin managed to make a film that I actually like, given that his other works, you know, I don't like them, but this is pretty good. I will be watching the original series, or at least giving it a try, and the original films, or try some other series of Star Trek as well. Um, but yeah, Star Trek Beyond receives a thumbs up for me. If you like this video, please hit that like button and leave a comment and subscribe if you have not already. And I will catch you in the next video, which will be next Friday. See you then. Bye-bye.